All right, we're here today using Wolf's team. There's not gonna be a builder for this one just because of the fact that this is Wolf's team from Charlotte. It's a well-documented team at this point and Wolf explained everything better than I could. I'm gonna cut to a run of code right here while I also point to the annotation on screen. You guys can check out both of those if you're interested in using a team. But again, I highly encourage you guys to just watch Wolf's vid. It's better than anything I could be giving for a team builder intro right now. And with that said, let's just start with the battles. I know I'm a bit late to covering this team as well. Well, very late. Late doesn't begin to describe it, but I had this team ready. I actually had the thumbnail made a while ago and I had needed a video for today. So I'm like, fuck it, we will record that. Uh, however, I've tried to record this video twice now and both times the video has ended because the first game I do, I have instant, immediately like really terrible lag and I give up. So we're gonna see if that happens again. We're taking on Dual Steel with uh, Screamtails. That's gonna be interesting. I feel pretty confident in going for an Ogremon Hearthling lead. I think it should do pretty decent next to Rillaboom, Boom, and we can just play very aggressively offensively speaking. I'm gonna bring my Incineroar as while it's not necessarily the best for like physical attacking, I think it's a really decent pivot here, and I could potentially use it as like a, just a fake out mon. I think it could be, I think that could be kind of decent. And then I'm gonna bring Fluttermane to actually I'm gonna ditch Incineroar and I'm gonna go with uh I'm gonna go with the Yoshifu because besides a Scarf Yoshifu that is faster than me a Scarf Landers for some reason, or the Screamtail having booster speed, which the Screamtail having booster speed is really the only one of those besides maybe a faster Urshifu that is likely. Uh, I, I feel confident this will just be the fastest mod on the field, and even if I have to lock into a move, I'm kind of okay. My opponent's going to proceed to go with an Archer Ludon Screamtail lead. I'm kind of curious. I'm actually very unsure what their play is with this, but I feel confident in just going for the fake out immediately into Screamtail, and then going for some sort of Terra Fire and nuking the Archer Ludon. Even if I don't necessarily KO it from full, it should be pretty close. We're going to see a booster energy activate and it is speed, that's kind of fine, because I can actually take out the Screamtail very handily. I'm going to pop my Terra Fire immediately into Arch. This doesn't really hurt me for later Pokemon, because even if the Urshifu comes, I can just dual Grassy Glide it. That should get around most threatening Urshifu sets. We're going to fake out the Screamtail meanwhile, since barring a Terra Ghost here, I'm kind of okay, since there's not really anything it can do, and the Screamtail did not go for Terra Ghost. Might have went for Protect, but it did not go for Terra Ghost. Archer Lunar can still definitely Terra, but these do typically Terra into Fairy, so it's still going to be a neutral typing anyway. Not to say that in-game ladder hasn't surprised me before, but I'm not really expecting something like a Terra Water set or like a Terra Dragon set. And we're going to see no Terra anyway, which which makes a lot of sense in this particular matchup. I don't think there's a reason for it to Terra. Uh, we're going to go for the Ivy Cudgel though, and especially before any sort of defense boost, this should be the greatest way possible we have to take this Pokemon out. And it does not KO, but a second one definitely will, even with this defense boost. So that's actually pretty huge. We'll see an Electroshock go off. They were probably going for Rain Dance this turn, meaning that we have a very surefire way to take out this Pokemon. Well, I can also go for a Grassy Glide before we have to deal with any sort of Encore bullshit here. If they go for, well, actually just to make sure, um, I'm gonna go for a, I think I'm gonna go for, so, hmm. I'm gonna go for the Ivy Clutch here. If they disable it, I'm kind of okay with that. We're gonna just have to take it, but I'm okay with that. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go for a Grassy Glide here just so I don't get Encored in the Fake Out. I'd rather get Encored in the Grassy Glide and just not do as much damage, or have my Grassy Glide even disabled because they predicted it, than have the Really Boom just locked into Fake Out. They forfeit immediately. Well, we have a game at least now that isn't gonna be fucked over due to lag, so that's something. Uh, we'll see you guys in game number two. All right, for game number two, we're taking on a Bramblegast Hitmontop team. This kind of feels like someone who loaded up for Battle Stadium singles and then was like, oh, let me try this team, and they accidentally loaded up doubles. But it's Master Ball, so I know that probably didn't happen, unless they happen to be Master Ball in both. Uh, either way, definitely an interesting team for sure. It is Tailwindless Tailwind-oriented team, because literally, if you just slap like a Tornadus over that Hitmontop, it kind of looks like it'd be just a viable Tailwind team. Uh, in terms of my lead, though, this is where it gets kind of interesting, because I don't really know how I'm going to lead against this. It's Fluttered Chiyu, to be fair, so I do feel kind of confident in just going with my, my dual Fake Out Mons, because I can Fake Out with the Incineroar and just go for Grassy Glide on the Rillaboom here, and I think it's a pretty viable lead option. Uh, I could go for that, and I feel kind of safe going for that too. I think I'm going to go with my Ogre Pond here. Actually, I'm going to lead off with my Ogre Pond. I feel confident in the dual Grass lead again, uh, because the Terrifier actually is very unrestricted here. I'm gonna go with my Fluttermane for sure. I think Fluttermane is a really good gleaner into this team. And I think for my final Mon, I kind of want to go with... I feel kind of inclined to go with Incineroar. It should be a decent way to check Goldengo, especially if they burn their Terra on something like Chiyu, Ogre Pond, Wellspring, etc. And not like that, but it's it's kind of a decent fake out Mon here, actually. They don't have a lot of great anti fake out outside of the Fluttermane and Goldengo. Uh, but Fluttermane isn't really breaking my instant anyway, and Goldengo is 
it's probably best checked by that Pokemon. So I'm kind of okay with this. Regardless, though, good luck of fun to my opponent. I am kind of curious to see their lead. I think it will be Fluttermane Chiyu, but I could see him on top maybe leading as, like, just a fake-out option for them. Fluttermane Chiyu lead. Okay, that's perfectly fine. My goodness, why am I lagging? I, I swear to God, it's not nearly as bad as it usually is, but I swear to God it happens, like, every time that I roll this outside arena. I don't know what's causing it. If so, And it's specifically, it's only been with this team. Like, if this recording happens to get butchered, you just aren't seeing the team. Um, so the fact that you're seeing this video, like the fact that I'm saying that and you're hearing it means the recording didn't get butchered because it wasn't as bad as it usually is. Uh, either way though, I'm going to proceed to go for a fake out into the Geo and just try and nail that immediately. In my Terra Ghost, I'm not bringing a Terra on my Rillaboom because I'm burning it on my Ogre Pond. And I'm just going to proceed to go for a Grassy Glide right into Fluttermane. I think with the damage boost, I can KO it pretty confidently. And even if I don't, I can get off a sizable enough amount of damage to at least punish it. Now, they did not go for the Terra, at least on the Fluttermane. They might have went for it on Chiyu, but they did not go for it on the Fluttermane, which is interesting. It's not to say that I'm expecting either the Terra. Really, unless this Terra goes Chiyu, I actually probably don't expect either the Terra. But it's still good to note regardless, because it means that they probably are going to Terra something like the Ogre Pond in the back, or maybe like a cool Dango. They're not going to Terra the Chiyu. Instead, they're going for a Protect. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I'm really okay with that. Because I can hopefully take out the Fluttermane with this Grassy Glide. And worst case scenario, I put myself in a position to guarantee take it out. And then I can swap in Incineroar just to make sure that I'm not losing my Rillaboom. And it seems like we will just take this out, which is great. That's really huge for us. Meaning that I chose the right Pokemon to go for Grassy Glide with. Because Rillaboom probably would have done significantly less damage. They're probably going to go into him on top here to try and weaken my offense, which I'm kind of okay with. I'm just going to go for Incineroar. And then I'm just going to go for the Ivy Cudgel into him on top. Because I can kind of just ignore Chiyu at this point. It's not a big threat. They're going to go into Welpon. Welpon is kind of fine. Honestly, I'm pretty okay with just going for like a Wood Hammer here and a Spiky Shield. If my... Well, actually, I'm going to go for a Grassy Glide here just with my Rillaboom. And then I think I'm going to go for a Spiky Shield here. I'm kind of fine just not immediately switching in. And I'd much rather see them like burn a Spiky Shield here just to try and predict. Or maybe even just go for a bad Terra. Versus having to preserve my Rillaboom for a situation that I don't really think I need of them. Now they are going to Terra, which is actually really interesting. Like I know they're probably doing it to boost the damage to kill my Ogre Pond. But like, they're making themselves weaker to Rillaboom, which is really good for me. So I'm kind of okay with this. I'm actually very okay with this for that matter. My Ogre Pond goes for Spike here. That's a great play for me. Because now their Ogre Pond cannot murder me. Our Rillaboom is going to go for Grassy Glide. And that's going to hurt. It won't kill, but it will hurt. And I can bring in my Incineroar on the following turn and put up immediate pressure into that Chiyu that is now also minus two, which is a very important to still know. Because they killed my Rillaboom as well, whatever hit this Ogre Pond goes for is now going to be forced to hit my Spiky Shield, which is really good for me. Because that Ogre Pond is taking even more damage. And then Ivy Cudgel is very much not friendly to Spiky Shield. It is going to take damage. So we've now gotten this- actually, it's not contact. Holy shit, I thought it was contact. Um, I mean, either way, this is still a very dead Ogre Pond. And I can proceed to go right into my Incineroar. They've burned their Terra, meaning that Chiyu would have to go for a Protect here to avoid the Fake Out. And even if they don't avoid the Fake Out, I mean, Chiyu is not doing a lot of damage to me. This is a play where I can honestly just kind of safely Parting Shot out and then just go for my... Uh, yeah, I'm going to Parting Shot out, actually. I'm going to Parting Shot into Chiyu because I don't really need to Fake It Out. And then I'm going to go for a Grassy Glide here straight into that Ogre Pond because they know I have it and they kind of can't really stop it. They're going to go for Protect. That's perfectly fine. And then they're going to, meanwhile, have to take this Grassy Glide, which is unfortunately... Oh, never mind. They're going to go for Spiky. Okay. But even still, they're still going to have to take the Grassy Glide on the next turn. And I'm still kind of okay with it because I can make this exact same play yet again with no punishment whatsoever. If they go into something like their Goldengo here to take the Grassy Glide better, sure. Whatever. I'm not really too concerned with that because either way, I'm going to get a really nice parting shot into my Flutter Main, which will be better prepared for it. If they're going to go instead into him on top to intimidate, I'm kind of okay with that too because Fluttermane will have a much better matchup into that. And if they go into something like the Urshifu, again, I'm kind of okay with that because, again, all of these Pokemon, I would rather have Incineroar in the back and have Fluttermane in the front for any sort of swap here. And if they don't swap, then I'm kind of fine too because getting Fluttermane in on the Chi will be really great because it is already so weak offensively. It's at minus two and it's going to only get weaker because whatever attack this goes for will not kill either of my Pokemon. Their Ogre Pond is now dropped, which was really like their best offensive threat here. And I'm not sure how they're going to defend against this. They're going to go for Heat Wave, which does nothing. Like this, this Chi was actually really weak now because it burned the overheat. I think if they went for Heat Wave instead, they could actually still have this potentially. Not that it would be great for them, but they could maybe get me into range of like priority spamming. 
and unfortunately they cannot do that anymore because their chi ended up lowering itself so much and it cannot switch anymore i now have a flutter main that is going to be able to calm mind on this very confidently and just kind of win the game and they can't really stop it either because unfortunately they just have no pieces to i'm assuming they'll probably forfeit i can't really imagine a pokemon in the back that's actually going to save them here without terra as if Goldengo comes in, I go for Ivy Cudgel. If they go into Urshifu, I Grassy Galactus Moonblast. And if they go into him on top, I just Calm Mind and Ivy Cudgel, and I just kind of survive. Like, I can always ignore the two. Oh, right, they have Bramble. It wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't Urshifu. I kept thinking it was, it was Urshifu, but it's Bramble. Uh, I mean, yeah, I just go for the Protect here, and then I go for the Ivy Cudgel here, and I just Massacre this. They probably have a Focus Sash, I'm kind of fine with that, because they can't go for Terra Blast, meaning that they're significantly weak here. They're not going to be able to go for any heat, well, any sort of uh, wind moves into the Chiyu, which makes it significantly weaker. Well, into the Bramble Gas, I should say, which, again, still makes it significantly weaker. They might go for Strength Sap. I'm kind of okay with that, though, because their Sash will be proc and I can just go for another Ivy Cudgel. It doesn't really affect me. Like, objectively, this Bramble Gas is kind of fucked. Unfortunately, they didn't go for Shadow Sneak. I really made the sequence as if they were going to go for Shadow Sneak, so it kind of sucks because I did, did just waste a turn. But whatever, it's, it's not the biggest deal. They're going to probably go for a Poltergeist then, if I had to guess. Uh, I can't really imagine. I, I don't think they'll go for a Strength Sap. Like, it kind of helps defensively speaking, but their Shiyu is so weak, they kind of just need to kill something. They are going to go for Poltergeist. Is it going to be in the Flur- Oh, it's going to be Ogrepan. Okay. So this will be a decent hit. It's not going to kill, but it'll be decent. Oh shit, it actually kills. Okay. What do you know? Well, either way, I can proceed to just go for a Moonblast here into the Ogre Pond. Well, and yeah, not into the Ogre Pond, into the Bramblegast. And then I can go for a Fake Out into the Chiyu just to preserve the turn. Because even if the Bramblegast does end up going for a Shadow Sneak, it's going to be minus one, which is great. Because my Fluttermane being the very bulky Fluttermane that she is, will take the hit. Because Bramblegast is not a strong Pokemon, especially without Terra. And I say this is someone who thinks that it's like kind of a nice pseudo viable Pokemon with Dale, and it is not going to be viable without Terra, and it is not going to be viable at minus one. We're going to go for a Shadow Ball here, and then I am going to go for a Fake Out tier. If they go for Dual Protect, that's fine. It's actually probably a decent play for them. I don't know if they'll click it, but they might go for it. They're actually going to let me go for the Fake Out, which is the first time they've done that. And they Shadow Sneak into my Incineroar, which feels like a misclick. I cannot imagine that was an intentional click, but even still, again, it would not have killed without the crit, and that move did not crit. So I can now proceed to just kind of go for a parting shot plus Moonblast until the Chiyu dies. I could technically go for the kill too with my Incineroar, but I don't know if I really need to. Like, I feel like it's kind of just safer to parting shot. Well, actually, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say fuck it and I'm going to go for knockoff here because that's probably my best play. Uh, they're going to cancel battle. Perfect. We've gotten two canceled battles at this point, which is kind of cool. Uh, we're going to go into our next match. We'll see you guys then. All right, for our final game of the day, we're taking on a dual Ruin team, which is kind of interesting. I feel like we haven't seen a lot of these in a while, but I know they were pretty common, at least, especially in the early part of Regulation C. So it'll be interesting. Ting Luna has been making a pretty big resurgence, and it does at least do some kind of stuff against this team, especially depending on the Terra type. Uh, I mean, the Fluttermane would normally be a really good response to a lot of these Pokemon, but with Ting Lu, that does become kind of awkward. I feel like Urshifu Rapid could be a potentially decent lead next to like Rillaboom. Um, not Rillaboom, sorry. Uh, next to Fluttermane. I can bring Farig as like a good switch into that. Especially because if they're going to target my Urshifu with E-Speed, I can just hard swap in Farig and be fine. And then I feel like that my final mon kind of has to be the Ogre Pond because I just need something I can wall break like really efficiently. And especially against the Tinglu where it will probably be Terra Poison as a defensive typing. Though other options could exist that would potentially be a little bit trickier. Uh, I feel like that Ogre Pond just having a nice fire type of stab that's not really going to end up being affected by anything besides types that are going to get screwed by either Fluttermane or Shifu. I feel like that's kind of the decent fourth mon. Uh, Incineroar wouldn't be terrible here, but at the same time, that is definitely going to be a in inner focus Dragonite. I feel like there's no other reason it's on this team with how aggressive it is besides the Tinglu. Uh, actually, they, they could maybe be multi-scale. That Tinglu might actually support a Dragonite set, but even still, it's objectively, it's probably not going to be the set that we're going to see. They're going to lead off with Tinglu and Dragonite. Ooh, okay, this kind of does just scream that they're like specifically multi-scale and I'm kind of inclined to see if they are or, or not. Either way, uh, because of the fact that it's not going to be a Chien Pao, I can probably actually just give up my Fluttermane. Actually, do I want to give up? Yeah, I can give up Fluttermane speed boost actually. And I can just go straight for the Terra Water and go for a Sergeant Strikes right into the Tinglu. Um, and then I could... I'm actually going to go for the Moonblast here into the Dragonite because realistically, uh, actually hold on, hold on, hold on. 
No, never mind. I do kind of need to swap because I need to make sure my Shifu can land this hit. So we're going to go into Furgaf. I don't think that they're going to go for that play necessarily, but the Dragonite does not scare me whatever it's going for here. And I really can't let them hard swap in Chien Pao. And even if I trade for it in theory, let them E-speed my, uh, my Urshifu and kill. They're actually going to swap out the Dragonite though, which makes this play work so much better because I now get completely unpunished for it. Even if they went for like, a more offensive move such as Outrage or like a dual wing beat or something. They're going to go into Really Boom instead. And my Urshifu is going to sponge this very easily. Not only that, but I can kind of just swap into my Ogre Pawn without any real risk after having gone for my Terra Water Sword of Strikes. And that will eviscerate the Urshifu. And I get a pretty free Hyper Voice in the following turn. There's a good chance that they probably end up swapping out Rillaboom or maybe bringing in Dragonite and just clicking Outrage. I'm kind of fine with however that goes. I am pretty curious though about what Terra this Urting move is going to go for. Because I feel like it kind of has to be Poison. It is going to be Poison. Okay, so that's, that's honestly fine. Tinglu might take the hit. I, I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of worried that Tinglu will take the hit. But it's not really going to do a lot back that I'm too scared of. I think it's probably clicking Heavy Slam into Fluttermane, which I'm okay with. The Surging Strikes, oh my god, that does like no damage. Holy shit. Why does this move do like no damage? Like this is really, really no damage. I'm Taro Water Boosted and not so 3 a KO. Holy fuck. They're going for Ruination. Okay, that's fine. Um, I kind of think I just have to go for Surging Strikes again. Like I'm okay with losing my Urshifu at this point if it means that I can kill the Tinglu. Because that Tinglu and it's leftovers too. Oh my goodness, that might be a problem. That might like really be a problem. I'm gonna go for the Sergeant Strikes either way. I do need some damage on that, like serious damage on that. And then I think I'm gonna go for a Hyper Voice here and just try and get off something into these Pokemon. That Rillaboom is actually gonna swap, which I'm kind of curious as to why the swap was made. But again, I get another turn that's pretty low punish. And while my while my Furrig isn't gonna do real damage, it's at least if that's multi-scale Dragonite going to be able to punish it to a degree. We're gonna get this Tinglu below half, which is good. And it's not Citrus, which means I don't need to risk popping it because we did confirm this is leftovers. And we'll probably get it like just above the red, which means that my Fluttermane can probably Shadow Ball in tandem with Furrig and be good. Though, again, not really the best situation to be in. We see that actually does enough damage where it could probably kill in tandem with the Shadow Ball, which is actually really promising. Uh, they're gonna go for Stealth Rock, okay. This is like the best case scenario for me because my opponent's gonna have to, even if they, so even if they swap in Chien Pao, there's gonna be something that ends up dying. Like something objectively will die this turn, which is great. That, that's really great. And my Furry, meanwhile, if they do swap, will go a lot less punished because we'll get off a guaranteed hit with Hyper Voice. And if no swaps happen, I still get off a really nice single target Hyper Voice because that Tinglu will die very quickly. And if I have to trade, I'm kind of okay with that. They're going to swap in. It's probably going to be another Rollo Room. I'm kind of okay with Rollo Room swapping in. I'm not too concerned because whatever Dragonite goes for is going to be kind of fine. Like if it goes for an Outrage, so what? If they go for a Flying Move, again, so what? My Farig will get off such a strong hit that it will not matter. And if they really leave my Farig alone, then at the very least, I can bring in my Ogre Pawn and force that Rollo Room to have an existential crisis. They are going to proceed to go for on Dragonite Thunder Wave. Okay, what the fuck am I fighting? I think I've given up on trying to establish the logic to this fight. Um, okay. So we're fighting, we're fighting what looks to be like a singles team. I'm kind of okay with that. That's really whatever. The Rillaboom, I think unironically both these Pokemon still underpace my Shifu. Um, I'm kind of curious. What's the speed stat looking like on this? Because I forgot if this is like how fast this is. 144. So that hits like two... That's like 217. Yeah, it's about like 217. We might outpace them depending on how low speed they are. I'm going for Surgic Tricks anyway. I don't need Urshifu that bad. Uh, we've already gotten so much damage off on the team that I'm kind of okay. And if they kill my Urshifu, then that just is it's fine. They're going for Wood Hammer here. That kills. What the fuck? Is that banded? I feel like it has to be banded. Like there's no other logical explanation I can apply to that than banned. Um, the really Boom dies though, which is really good. Like, I'm okay with that trade, actually. An Ogre Pond Fluttermane should still be a decent field position if they kill me with the Dragonite. They're going for Air Slash. Okay, so this is Dragonite that I do not need to respect because the Tinglu is going to weaken it. They've lost the really Boom, which was like their best piece. I'm going to go into Fluttermane. Like, like Fluttermane can kind of just ignore the Tinglu and be fine. Also, I could just kill it with my Shifu and be fine. We're going to go into Fluttermane now, and I'm just going to proceed to Moonblast into the Dragonite. That Dragonite will definitely die. L like, I understand that, you know, my Urshifu is paralyzed, and maybe it doesn't hit its move or whatever. The Dragonite will die at least, which is good. So we're going to go for that. We're going to go for the Moonblast here, and I'm just going to kill the Dragonite. 
If Dragonite lives, I'd be fucking surprised. Uh, but I'm kind of okay either way. We're gonna go for the Moonblast. That kills the Dragonite perfect. This was mostly just to avoid like a T-Wave path. And as long as our Shifu doesn't get paralyzed here, then my Fluttermane evades this entirely and it gets into the final Pokemon very freely. This becomes a win con for me and it works out really well. So Urshifu is going to claim some serious damage on the Stinglu, and that's going to work out really well for us uh, because there's no Pokemon they could have in that back line, even if that has a viable set, that will properly handle the combination of Ogre Pond, Urshifu, and Fluttermane. Especially when I hard swap out my Urshifu into Ogre Pond to get Aqua Jet if that is a Pokemon like, for example, the Arcanine because that will get me actual priority in case they're going for a move like Rock Slide, so I can still make it work. I can still definitely make it work, because for Ogre Pond in particular, I would not really do anything against Arcanine, let's say, if that was the Pokemon, since I don't have priority anymore at Grassy Glide. They're going to proceed to bring in Hisui Arcanine. Okay, perfect. So yeah, then I switch out her Shifu, and I just go for Aqua Jet, because Aqua Jet will be very free. They can't tear this thing anyway. I was kind of thinking it might be Chien Pao, but it's not Chien Pao. I thought with the way they played it, they might be cleaning with Chien Pao. Uh, but either way, I just go for Shadow Ball here. They're going to probably go for Rock Slide. It will do a lot of damage to my Zine. But I can click Aqua Jet with a Shifu in the end. It'd be fine even if this is a faster set. Because they will not take the hit. There's there's no Paschal Berry set imaginable that will take the hit from Urshifu Rapid with Terra Water after I go for Shadow Ball into it. Like, there's there's just not a set. It does not exist. They're going for Extreme Speed. Okay, that will not kill my Ogre Bond. Which means I just get another Shadow Ball turn. And that's kind of fine. Like, like really the only way that they got out of this was maybe hoping that like I got full parried and they, they went for the rock slide. Well, they, they killed both these Pokemon after taking that and then they went for the rock slide. Uh, just for good measure, I'm gonna go for the Ivy Cudgel here, thinking that they'll probably E-Speed and I'm gonna go for the Shadow Ball here and just claim my kills. Because again, they're not gonna go for rock slide. Well, they are actually going for rock slide now, which I'm kind of okay with, but my Ogre Pond kills. So I never need to take the rock slide, which is kind of decent. And even if they went for rock, well, even if they went for E-Speed and killed my Ogre Pond with a crit, my Flutterman just gets another fucking attack off. And so it was a guaranteed point at that point before I had to lose Pokemon. So, solid. Uh, we went 3-0 in the video, which is a pretty big surprise. Like, I can't lie, I really was not expecting that because typically I do not play these teams really well. Typically with balanced sort of teams, or especially like the last time I covered a Wolf team on this channel, my goodness. Like, like Wolf was an incredible builder, a really strong player overall, but I cannot pilot Wolf's teams. And that's it's kind of fine. Like, I'm not, I'm not supposed to be piloting Wolf's teams. I'm just doing it for content. Uh, but if you want to try the team out yourselves, I highly recommend it. It's a pretty fun team. And I think that now I've, I've kind of understood the lines, which I will also say I think really worked better in my favor because of the fact that I had to scrap like two videos due to fucking immense lag. Like, like the first time I had to scrap it, it was due to mic cutting out and then also the game just crashing mid mid match. And the second time it was just going at like 12 frames per second to the point where I got almost timered on a couple turns. Like this is a very objectively fine set of videos so well objectively fine set of games so if you guys enjoy this and want to see more leave a like and subscribe also consider becoming a channel member we have a bonus video going up in just a couple days for our channel members exclusively so if you want to get in line for that hopefully you guys enjoy it it's going to be the best megas for vgc when they do return so it should be pretty fun our current channel members are going to be none other than Zeke, Mia, Rausakura, Obo, Endless Gadgets, Josh Gate Ultra Player, and Incog M. Thank you guys so much for your support. It is greatly appreciated. And with that said, I will see you guys in tomorrow's video. Until then, peace out, guys.